I do fucking love my cleaner. <laughs> I don't have one. How the fuck? Are... I'm on the telly and you've got a fucking cleaner. I don't even own the house. <laughs> no. Today's not E, Welsh Wednesdays. Welcome to Welsh Wednesdays with me, Kate Gill Williams, and Kiri Pritchard McLean, where once a week we have a little score spark in Cymraeg, and then at the end we try and summarise in Welsh. Finn Williams. Yeah. Or Cuffers, have I uh, nicknamed him? <laughs> I know very little about Cuffers. He's the kind of person that in primary school you would learn about um, living locally and you go to, is it Oriel Morn in Llagevni? Mm-hmm. Um, where I think, I feel like that was his local. There's a lot of lot of stuff in the gift, gift shop there of his. So, Cuffin Williams was born in Llangevni in 1918. Um, and he actually had quite a cruel um, start to life. His mum gave him away to a farm after she had him because she she I think she didn't kind of bond with him so he was nursed with another family and then he sort of describes that he he came back to her when he was a bit older so I think she just was um yeah struggling and he kind of talks about that, that she had a son before him and really loved him and then he just kind of came along <laughs> And he he does say that he was loved, but he kind of describes the type of love that he had, which suggests to me that if you have to distinguish it and describe it, you you might not have felt um, entirely secure, really. He was quite a bright child, he describes. He, um, you know, he he engaged academically and then he had an awful incident in Bangor Hospital when he was, I think he was seven or eight, and he went in to have his tonsils out. And the uh, surgeon had a heart attack and ended up like cutting all his palate out and everything. And then he, he describes after that, that he was um, really thick. He says, I just, I just went to mush after that and couldn't engage educationally or in school. So it's really, really horrific Dickensian sort of start to life, which we'll come on to later, but kind of feel like his paintings reflect that a little. I do a podcast about true crime and this if this is like a serial killer's upbringing where you'd be like and this is obviously why he ended up chopping people up that's unreal Hmm. he was a bit of a loner in school and didn't really hang around with anyone and he talks about that that art wasn't a salvation it wasn't something that he hooked onto when he was young and it wasn't you know he wasn't a protege or anything like that he just um Yeah, he liked hanging around on his own and visiting old ladies and just walking into town or in the countryside in a top hat and tails. So he's quite an eccentric little boy already. Um, And then he he goes on to join the the Welsh Fusiliers, but unfortunately he... um, It's an awful description, but they said he was invalided out of the Fusiliers because of his epilepsy, which is quite relevant to to his work. So he decided... Well, he had to leave basically, and I think that was a, a bit of a crushing blow for him because he loved, he he loved the uh, idea of being in the Fusiliers because he got to be with horses. So when he was growing up, Welsh was not allowed to be spoken in his in his household, um, and his mum would would say like absolutely not, and there was a lot of arguments about that, and their arguments would be about their use of the Welsh language, and he talks about his relationship with it and he says he, he isn't a very good Welsh speaker and what he tends tended to do was he'd bump into someone in the village and he'd be like oh sit down tame la Mrs Jones and they would just go off on one for like 20 minutes and then they'd go and tell everyone oh Kevin's such a good Welsh speaker <laughs> just listening <laughs> okay duly noted uh, decided to enroll in art school and when he arrived he describes that the tutors didn't really see anything imaginative in him. They just kind of took a punt and and gave him a chance. And it wasn't like a natural ability. They just kind of let him experiment a little bit. And they actually liked the fact that he was in the military rather than coming from a privileged background because he he was just a bit more focused than some of the students. So they let him stay there as more of a, a grounded figure within the class. So it's all really weird. He wasn't there on on their merit but he was sort of there to be a bit of stability for the other the other lads in the school 
that is such a strange set of circumstances, isn't it? To like yeah. get into art school, like oh, we think you'll you'll calm the other boys down because you're from a rough background. Because I also I thought he was from a very privileged background I'd got from somewhere. It wasn't so much his. Um, I think it was more the fact that he was probably quite grounded and sensible rather than riffraff. He moved to London to, for art school and then decided to stay on and teach and he was there for 30 years but by his own admission just wasn't a great teacher. He um, he said he'd often just leave the class and he'd go out and, and draw and the like the head of school would come and find and be like you need to let us know if you're not going to be in because <laughs> your class needs covering. <laughs> So he decided to do like a job share with someone and he'd do three days a week and someone else would do the other and he would just spend the time drawing. He just immersed himself in in his art and he, he loved it. He found sort of, um, not fame, but appreciation, I guess, when he was much older. Because, I, you know, he was definitely celebrated. I remember growing up, he was celebrated and he must have been still alive then as well. And yeah. It's one of those things where, you know, because people say, oh, artists can never make money when they're alive. And he did, but only in, like I'd say, the twilight years of his life. There would have been years and years of living in probably very real poverty, especially living in London. I don't imagine even going... I, did, you te did you teach at the Slade? You taught somewhere like a... No, that's where he went. He taught at Highgate, I think. That's it, yeah. So he went to, like, the best art school you can go to, pretty much. and And then still has a life of, like making ends meet. In the 70s he actually moved back to Wales and he became the first Welsh artist to make money from art whilst being in Wales. Um, but the reason that happened is it was more the sons of like farmers and um, ministers who then moved to London to to kind of, um, they were more educated so they moved there for their job prospects. But they had a sense of like hiraith so they would buy his art and that's how he made money because the, the thing about Kiffin Williams' art is it's always been about home and it's always about the landscape that he, he grew up in. The work he produces is quite, um, it's quite violent. So he, he paints with a, a knife and a brush. Um, so his strokes are quite strong. His, his colors are, um, they don't blend so easily they're quite like a stark contrast um and he describes when he does portraits that when he used to paint men the men would love their own portrait of themselves but the women would hate it and I wonder if that's because he he's just I don't know this plays into that like kind of masculinity and they would enjoy themselves being represented like through like literal knife strokes and, mm. and stuff like that so I think that's really fascinating that's striking amazing. Also, so like, of course, men like portraits of themselves. <laughs> of course. Two really weird incidents happened with his, with his art. So, um, one man, when he hung the the painting on his wall, really kind of strong reactions. He just apparently like fell down dead. Just just died, <laughs> seeing his art. And it happened another time to a woman in Carnarvon, who really loved one of his paintings. She was in her 60s and um, she was like saying, I can't afford it, but I love it. I really want it. And she was writing the check and then she died like midway through writing the check. So he think he kind of says there's violence in his paintings and it kind of it provokes that reaction in people. I really want I don't not believe him, but like, oh, yeah, sorry, I speak weird. A man had a heart attack when he had a scalpel in my mouth. Uh, my paintings are cursed. I've killed two people with it. Like it just sounds like he's either the most unlucky person in the world, or everyone around him is like hammering the bacon sandwiches <laughs> in the morning, or he's a bit of a liar. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> it just seems a bit like, okay, Cuffin, I'm not sure how much of this I buy anymore. Honestly, Kiri, he's so eccentric. I because um, his art, I guess. I don't know much about art. I don't know if I'm massively into it. I prefer the context of art being created. So now I know more about him and the type of character he is. I, I tend to like their art a bit more if I know where it's come from or what it's about. Um, seems like a really vulnerable man who's had this awful, like traumatic past. 
and it's transferred into his work, but he still isn't able to articulate or see, see the similarities. And I don't know if you listen to Desert Island Disc, which makes me sound like a wanker, but Sue Lawley is like, she's quite cutthroat in her questioning. And she just says to him at one point, um, so your man didn't love you. And he has to kind of correct it and be like, well, she had her own version of loving me. Um, and then right at the end, he talks about how he he never married and he he always wished he he had and he wished he'd had children and how his artwork is his children and he's never wanted to make loads of money off it he's had to and he said you know I've had to accept commissions and, and make the money but I I'd rather have just friends had it so I know where each piece of my work is just a real hirith in his work I think hirith yeah. is I agree that lots of like lots of scenes I recognize are being peculiar to North. You know how like Lowry is a really good snapshot of that time in that area. I feel mm. like Kevin Williams is a great snapshot of that time in this area. Although what I would say is this area, the, the kind of scenes he paints, which is a lot of agricultural stuff, hasn't changed vastly from what the 40s sort of you know when early mechanization came in so you know hill farm is still operating much the way that they did 100 years ago and so there's a timelessness to the stuff he does and my uncle's got you know the one that's a sheepdog i think it's one of his more famous ones Which yeah i, I know it's really nice i like that one you can yeah. buy it on a tote bag in oriel board <laughs> that's the closest i'll get to a Kiffin williams a tote bag <laughs> It's not beautiful but he by his own admission he says my work isn't beautiful they're not picturesque scenes they they do they capture the violence of the landscape I know that sounds really dramatic but I've always thought about like living where I do and especially when I just drive through Penna Pass I find it quite a claustrophobic place I find it atmospheric mm -hmm. um and I think the colours and the way he uses them, that is, that is in his his paintings. And you're right, like Lowry captures Manchester. For, it's Manchester, right? Yeah, Manchester, yeah. Salford, yeah. He captures the sky so well. It's just like always that colour. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, it's wonderful. And when I think of like, people always say to me, oh, you've lived, you know, living in Cornwall and now you live in North Wales, quite similar, but it's not. They're, they're a different colour, different landscape. It's so interesting that, yeah, I, I think that he, it seems like he's had a much harder life than I anticipated in many ways. Like emotionally, there's a lot of trauma there. And then, you know, that idea of wanting to just make your art and give it to your friends and then actually having to pay the bills and kind of sounding like he's too useless to do anything else. Um, in you know, in terms of even like teaching, he can't manage that. Interesting thing of he's like there's a hardness and a bleakness to the world he's representing that I think is represented in his existence as well it's mm -hmm. different obviously being a hill farmer but I think it's probably some of the same you know the coldness and the loneliness and the the graft is probably not you know miles away from how he felt or how he was living this darkness is Kioscora, there's light and dark there. Um, I just thought he he seemed so funny as well, just a great character. Like he's he's can um, I don't know he can see the humour in his situation, and he's he's sad, but he died from lung cancer, which they they suggest could be from the paints. I think it was a an oil based paint, lead oil based paint, and it says. Um, the irony of that wasn't lost on his humour. So he must have said something about that along the way. Um, but yeah, it's really, really sad irony. But, you know, his painting will live on. And so will that episode of Desert Island Disc. It is brilliant. And that tote bag. Don't forget the tote bag. To show our school spa. Do we mean Barody Shalad? I'm done. Well, do we hang in Kai de Gag, really? Kai mean Kai mean Kuntav. Yeah, you know, and he my dear Leon, he cluid and done Cafe Williams. A cross onion metal or my Cafe Williams and 
you know, uh, uh, Hoggin, Sin, Mindy, Ascolvoned, Eva, Flower, or Arian, uh, you know, and oh, Ruan, do you say, um, you know, Ganada artists, uh, you know, um, t- Tally, no, t- oh, not Tally, not, not Prunny, Tally is to pay, Prunny is to pay. By sell is Gwerth, Gwerthi, Gwerthi, the the Kel Fruan, and na my the Thoral e Cluid. I'm done a beat ever lower or you know three star struggle. Um. So yeah, my the Thoral and um. Do you think in metal <laughs> lower? I'm done Kelf. You know. Um, mm. quite ignorant, really. Um, on pan the pan, yeah. What am I trying to say? The metal. Um, a sheen or Cuffin Williams. A d. A team lot oyer. A dimmen um Carl. Lower or slow. Leo, no, Leo, not lion, Leo, and a lion. Um, uh, yeah, team of oyer, a uh, um, a uh, a uh, Leo, um, Ganade v Medal or um, Shechin, Shechin v Medal. Um, slate. Yeah, yeah. I always always think of slate. Just think you know. Uh, yeah, that's I don't know how else to describe it. It's just a feeling I have when I look at it, and you know, um, ah, uh, yeah. So do metal my the thoral equid and Dan, you know, Cuffin Williams, Sir Cuffin Williams, sorry, um, you know, Grenada Lean, Lean, um, or Thermia. Ah, uh, you know, an availiad achos mein um da uh you know snapshot or a a a radal a rad er adal um. So we have seen Ayan as well. Evo um a team law panting Edric at a scene. They do feel cold, and that's like that's quite a skill to uh transpose that like a, a, f- a feeling of temperature from a from a picture that someone's drawn is incredible really um dwi'n siomedig efo fy'n Gymraeg Rwan achos dwi'n isio disgrifio Cuffin Williams mwy ond sgen i ddim geiriau i, I disgrifio o a mae o'n deserves mwy <laughs> na fi i um siarad am dan a bywyd no no so um oh dwi ddim yn cofio an just dweud dwi'n really joy a dysgu am dan am dan efo achos um fel ti dwi ddim yn really gwybod llawer am dan celf a uh, dip yn barch scathing and just meddwl oh dwi ddim yn really diddorol ond mae o'n mae o'n yn anhygoel mae o'n swnio yn anhygoel just fel din efo llawer o Delicacy, ach, um, Doniol, a hefyd um, gaethon o bywyd anodd, dwi'n meddwl, um, mae'n llawer o drist efo o, ach, a relationship efo a mam o. So, uh, y lluniau gan Cuffin Williams yn, ie, yeah, mae'n, mae'n violent, mae'n y gair dar i disgrifio nhw, dwi'n meddwl, a my own capture a, a, a landscape draws a gogled Cymru, a mynedoedd, um, brain oer, so anhygoel, really. So it's, been good to, it's been good to recalibrate, actually, my relationship with Cuffin, since as yep. we shared a very um, significant building together. As it turns out, I found out 10 minutes ago. So I went to primary school in his house. <laughs> I, I could have brought that to the table a bit earlier, couldn't I? 
cyffrous iawn i siarad am dan ca- <laughs> a siôr Gymru brenhinol. Genuinely, like, right up my street, that kind of stuff. I just want to hear more about Pony Club, so if that's thrown in the mix. Do you know what? The, the old PC might have been there, but um, the, uh, the Anglesey branch certainly wasn't repping. Um, so oh. I was there in I was there in my unofficial capacity as a child. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah.